Hi, I'm Chilton Webb, and this is Glycon. This is the latest version for the Oculus Quest. I want to show you a few Quest-specific features. First, when you come in, you'll notice you stomp around a little bit. Let's fix that real quick. Pop open the menu, go to legs. And in legs, set the comfy leg distance to a little higher than it is until you're happy with it. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, second, uh, we want to go into here to go to Skybox and click on the Oculus button and click Pass Through. Now I can see the rest of the room that I'm in, and I can uh, walk around and record stuff in the room. Okay, and so that gets me hand tracking. I mean, I'm sorry, that gets me leg tracking, and it gets me pass through. But what about hand tracking? So if you'll notice the hand tracking, you notice where my hands are positioned with the controllers. This is so that you don't end up with this weird situation with uh, with your, your your hands like this, which I see in a lot of uh, mocap videos and stuff where the the person's hands didn't exactly match up with the way the arms should look. And I just want you to know it's, it kind of stands out, especially if you're using iClone and your uh, joints aren't um, human-like. Uh, when you're doing the animation, if you take if you bring in mocap data, often that mocap data won't fit the iClone avatar. And so you want to make sure at the very least that you watch out for this situation. You want your wrist to kind of be straight. So that's why it's like that for the default settings on this. If you want to recalibrate it, all you got to do is you um, hold down the bottom two buttons and then you step forward into uh, in, into the basically where the hands are located in space. And you'll notice that after doing that, and you're going to have to play around with it a little bit, you'll notice that you, you, can, you actually have quite a bit of control over how your hands are going to map to... Uh, your controllers until you, and you just mess with it until you feel like it's right, feel like it's better than it was before. So that's the basics on calibration and and hand tracking. You, there's a number of new changes for the legs uh, here. Where you can set change the step height. Do you like that? Step duration, how long it's going to take you to take that step. And the uh, distance for balance, this is um, basically when you lean forward, lean back, how far you can lean forward and back before you start taking another step. Hope that makes sense. And then foot side offset is um, basically how far to the side you want your feet to go when you take a step. Okay. Find something that you feel is comfortable. And then minimum center of gravity to foot distance. This is a weird one, but it's in here for a reason. Basically, if we, if you look at the feet and you look at your pelvis, and you, if it was a line from your head straight down to the ground, how um, far how, or how close that line to your foot is will determine when your body is off, or is when your body is uh, to the point where the avatar thinks, oh they're going to take a step here. I need to, I need to prepare for that. So if you set it really low, then it'll let you get really close to that leg or even kind of overlap that foot. And if you set it really high, then as soon as you even start to get close to that foot, it's going to start trying to recalibrate where the feet go. So these, that's what the settings are there for legs. And then under avatar itself, there's a new setting. Let's get that a little closer. Use center of hands and use rotation of headset. This is the head to head, a hand to head rotation. And the way this works is if it's over here, then when I move my hands around, my torso matches. Okay. So my legs don't always match unless I take a step, but my upper torso should match my hand locations if it's set to that one. And if it's on the far end, use rotation of headset, then no matter how I move my hands, my head. Uh, controls the orientation of the of the body okay and so you can set it anywhere you want and you can create you know kind of a maybe you want a little more um, influence from the he headset or more influence from the hand controllers you, it's up to you all right so that's it for the new changes there and now I want to get into hand tracking so I'm going to set the hand tr controllers down on this uh, little stool here and as soon as I do that um, Hopefully, there we go. You'll notice that it's now tracking my hands. Now you can see from the pass-through that it's not exactly tracking my hands. That's from the calibration earlier. That, that's okay. Um, 
this this is uh, good enough for now and I don't need to recalibrate it just yet. If I wanted to though, I just go back into recalibration. You've got to use the controllers to calibrate. But here's a really huge thing that we changed. In VR, if you can't track the hand locations, the VR headset thinks you're using a controller that's no longer visible. And so what happens is in the old versions of this and in other apps, uh, if you're using hand tracking and the hands are not visible, all of a sudden your hands go to weird places because it thinks um, that you're using a controller that for some reason is no, not visible and it's really weird. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. Now, if we lose track of the hands, we just kind of freeze them in place and give it a slight movement to, to keep that uh, hand still human-like while, while we're waiting for the cameras to figure out where your hands went. And that's all that takes there. Okay, so now we're moving around again. You can see the hands are tracking just fine. Everything is tracking. You got your hand control. Uh, by the way, this this action right here, these hands, um, this is higher fidelity than you get from a lot of gloves. And all it's costing you is the cost of a VR headset and a copy of Glycon. And you have basically for most hand movement, you have higher fidelity than you're going to get with VR, professional VR gloves. And that blows me away. I did not know that until I had to edit some um, animations that were done with professional gloves and uh, they were garbage. And so I had to basically redo them in Glycon. So um, my point is, uh, this is really cool. This is really useful. Um, you can get, uh, you, you can occasionally get it to wonky, go a little wonky, but it's kind of difficult. And so um, if you need to do some some hand stuff, some hand, hand animation stuff, uh, make sure So if you need to do hand animation, take a look at Glycon, especially if you already have a VR headset, at least grab the demo, try it out, see what you think, what's the worst could happen. Um, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than buying gloves. That's how the hand tracking works. Now, one key thing here is, in order to fix that weird bug uh, with the freezing of the hands, we have to do one special thing when you move back to the hand trackers, or the regular hand controllers, and I wanna show you that right now before I forget. So when you pick up the hand controllers, it no longer immediately assumes you're using hand controllers. You have to pull a trigger on one of the hand controllers. As soon as you do that, it's back to using hand controllers. That's it. Okay, um, that's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything, drop me a line um, and uh, leave, a, leave something in the comments or head over to the Discord. Lots of friendly people in the Discord that can help you out. For more information, go to glycon3d.com and um, I can't wait to see what you guys make with us. Thanks. Have a great day. Yeah.